Michael Jackson's home, Neverland, is a 3,000-acre ranch three hours north of Los Angeles. As with most of his life, it has to be seen to be believed. Inspired by the children's fairy tale, Peter Pan, about the little boy who never grew up, it's a multi-million dollar, man-made slice of make-believe. As well as the full-size funfair, there's a zoo with giraffes, elephants, tigers, and a couple of orangutans. Bubbles the Chimp has been moved out to an animal sanctuary. It's literally paradise for a 10-year-old child, but Michael Jackson is now 44. The inspiration for Neverland Peter Pan. Why is Peter Pan a figure of such interest and inspiration to you? Because Peter Pan, to me, um, represents something that's very special in my heart. You know, he represents youth, childhood, never growing up, magic, flying, everything I think that children and wonderment and magic, what it's all about. And to me, I just have never, ever grown out of loving that or thinking that is very special. Do you identify with him? Totally. You don't want to grow up? No, I am Peter Pan. No, you're not. You're Michael Jackson. I'm Peter Pan in my heart. The climate is a problem for Jackson. He says the colour-changing skin condition vitiligo has made him allergic to the sun. So, shielded by his umbrella, he took me to his most secret place. I call it my giving tree because it inspires me. Uh, I love climbing trees in general, but this tree I love the most because I climb up high and I look down on its branches and it gives me, I just love it, so many ideas. I've written so many of my songs in this tree. I wrote um, Heal the World in this tree, Will You Be There, Black or White, um, Childhood. You're actually saying that you climb that tree. Yeah. How far do you climb up it? All the way to that seat, all the way to that kind of spot up there, kind of like a deck where it's like a bed. Do you want to climb it now? Yeah. Give me hold the umbrella. Yeah. You go and climb it, and let me. And when you've climbed it, let's see how inspiring it is. Aren't you coming? No way. This is a big secret. I never show anybody my giving tree. Okay, I'll try. I'm slightly worried about my shoes slipping. Come on. Is it safe? Of course. I'm frightened. <laughs> my inspiration. I think I'm going to stop here. <laughs> you don't climb trees? No, I do not. You're missing out. I'll leave you to it. Looking out across the morning, where the city's heart begins to be. I love climbing trees. I think it's my favorite thing, having water balloon fights and climbing trees. I think those two are my favorite. Don't you prefer making love or hmm? going to a concert or you prefer, you really mean that, that you prefer climbing trees and having a balloon fight? Yeah, water balloon fight. And you prefer that to anything else? Well, as my pastime fun, you know, not, can't compare it to performing. But other people play football, basketball, I like to climb trees. So how had this singing and dancing genius arrived in the surreal place that is his life today? I started to look for answers back at the beginning. He played me his first single, Big Boy, which was released when he was just eight. By then, 
Michael Jackson had already been performing for three years. Do you remember when you first discovered that you had a, a special musical talent? My mother caught me making my bed one day, and I was singing. And she said to my father that I could sing, and he didn't want to hear of it. You know, he said um, that Jermaine's the lead singer, not Michael. My mother said, Joe, you really should hear him sing. He can sing. He goes, no, Jermaine's the lead singer of the group, and that's it. She forced him to listen to me, and once he listened to me, from that moment on, I was the lead singer of the group. My entire childhood, I remember people always saying to me, he's a 42-year-old midget. At first I didn't understand, but what they meant was the way I, you know, moved on stage and the way I sang, like you say, the inflections or whatever. Did somebody teach you to do that? No, you can't teach that. You can't teach it. It has to come from inside. It's a gift, you know. Precisely, going to Motown Studios to record. And right across the street from the studio was a park. And I could hear the roar of the, you know, the Little League team, and they were playing soccer and football and volleyball, and they were playing baseball. And I remember a lot of the times looking back and really hiding my face, crying. <laughs> I wanted to play sometimes, and I couldn't, you know. Why I had to go. I had why, to go, why couldn't? I had to go to the studio. Show me what you could do. Shake it, shake it, baby. Come on now. Shake it, shake it, baby. Ooh, ooh. One, two, three, baby. A, B, C, baby. Na, na. Go and be a baby. Hey! Let's go. When you would be practicing, you were very heavily disciplined by your father. Mm. What was that like? <laughs> uh, well, I, I didn't have it that hard because he used me as the example. It was like, do it like Michael. You know, and he, he practiced us with a belt in his hand. And if you miss a step, expect to be... Uh... Just let me... Go back, you just said that you would practice the dance steps and your father would be holding a belt in his hand. Is that yeah. what you just said? Yes. And he would tear you up if you missed. And so we, not only were we practicing, we were nervous rehearsing because he sat in the chair and he had this belt in his hand. And if you didn't do it the right way, he would tear you up, really get you. And I, I got it a lot of times, but I think my brother Marlon got it the most because he had a hard time at first, and he tried so hard. 